Hello, my name is Felipe Gavilan, and in this video, we are going to test ChatGPT4. GPT4 is a new version of ChatGPT, which supposedly it is more intelligent, it is more capable of giving better answers, and so on. So we are going to ask it to build two C# -sharp applications, and also we are going to ask it to read the Entity Framework Core documentation to answer a question for us. So let's get started. All right, I'm here in the ChatGPT Plus page. As you can see here, I can select to use a different GPT model. By default, it is using 3.5, but I can use GPT-4 if I want to, so I will do that. So the first thing that we're going to ask GPT-4 is to create a simple calculator console application in C-sharp. So let me paste that. Write a calculator application in C-sharp should be a console application. It should handle the basic arithmetic operations. So let's press enter. And as you can see, it is generating the application. This is a really simple application, a really simple way of writing it. As you can see, it is not even attempting to validate the inputs of the user. That is not good. It is using a switch statement to handle every single arithmetic operation. That is fine. It won't allow me to divide by zero, as you can see here. Now, let me say the program should validate the user input and also allow the user to perform multiple operations. So it will update the program. So as you can see, now what it's doing is that it is using try parse to validate that this is actually a number and it is using a while so that if the user enters an invalid number, then it will allow the user to do it again. And it does the same for this input that we have here. But sadly, it is not validating this operand variable that we have here. It would have been good if it used this same logic here to validate the operand. But it is fine. And as you can see, it is using a do while. It is just now that I noticed that it is using a do while. And it is using this code to validate that the user wants to continue doing more operations. Now, this is fine. But what I want to do now is to create a web API. So let me say. Create a web API in ASP.NET Core and C-Sharp. It should do the four CRUD operations for a person model. Also, each person should have several addresses. Make sure you do the CRUD also for the address model. Use SQL Server with Entity Framework Core. All right, so it is providing guidance for creating the web API using the .NET CLI. It says JavaScript, this is not right, but okay. And it also says that this is Java, but that is not correct. But it's saying that we should install these two packages to work with Entity Framework Core. That is correct. Then it is creating the person class. And as you can see, it is using a list to establish that we have a one-to-many relationship between person and address. And as you can see here, it is putting here the place where we're going to put the foreign key. And, and also it has the navigation property for going from address to person. Now. It says that we should create a DB context. As you can see here, we're inheriting from DB context. We're using DB context options because we're going to need it in order to configure the DB context into the dependency injection system of ASP.NET Core. It says that we should use the startup class. That is not correct anymore because in new templates of .NET, we don't have the startup class. We only use the program class, but that is fine. It says here that we should use a DB contest, application DB contest, and then pass the connection string. And then it says that we should put the connection string in the AppSettings JSON file, that is fine. And it has here an example of a connection string, as you can see here. Then it says that we should create a migration and then do the update to create the database. And then here we have the basic root operations for the person model. It says that we should create a person controller CS. It has get persons. It does include to bring the addresses of each person, then get person by ID. If the person is null, then we're going to return a 404. Otherwise, we return the person, then post person to add a new person. And notice that it is using asynchronous programming, which is correct when we're dealing with IO operations. Then we have put person in order to update the person. It is handling here that DB update concurrency exception, which is great. Now, sometimes this happens that it just stops. You have to say continue here so that it continue building the application. Now, as you can see here, it's continuing from where it left off, which was here. So this is the continuation. Then we are deleting the person. It is using all code to remove a person that is now 
since Entity Framework Core 7, there is a more modern and efficient way of deleting a record, but this is fine. And then it is doing the same for the addresses controller. As you can see here, it is doing the four CRUD operations. Well, for example, this is disappointing because it is not using asynchronous programming for this operation, but again, this is fine. Now, let me ask for, write a YAML file for deploying this web API into an Azure App Service using Azure DevOps. All right, so it is creating the Azure Pipelines YAML file. As you can see here, it has its trigger for the main branch, build configuration release. This is all okay, Azure Service Connection, Web API name, and then it is listing the steps. And then as you can see, it is giving us explanations here, but as you can see, it provided a full YAML file for deploying our application into an Azure App Service, which is great. I think it is, looks fine. It's not complete, but it looks fine. And then it is giving us some instructions on how to work with this. Let me stop generating because there is something else that I want to show you. And that is that something that I can do is that I can ask questions about articles. For example, I have this Microsoft documentation here that talks about choosing a testing strategy for Entity Framework Core. Now here it says that we shouldn't use the in-memory provider for testing. I want to ask ChatGPT why that is the case. So let me copy this URL and let's come here and let me say text from and let's paste the URL and then I will ask why shouldn't we use the in-memory provider for testing? And let me press enter and it will read the article and it will try to answer my question. It says that in-memory provider for Entity Framework Core is designed to act as a non-relational data store, which is useful for quick prototyping and basic testing. However, there are several reasons why it is not recommended for more extensive testing. And the first reason is behavioral differences, which basically means that it doesn't behave the same as a real relational database like SQL Server or Postgres. So that test could pass for the in-memory provider, but it may not pass if you use a real relational database like SQL Server. So basically it gives us false positive or false negatives, which makes the test useless. So as you can see, what I like about this is that it's not only that I can ask questions, it's that I can pass an article like this and then ask questions about that article and then it provides a summary trying to answer my question. This makes ChatGPT4 very powerful and very useful because it will allow us to save time when either building applications, as we can see here, or reading extensive documentation, as we can see here. So let me know in the comments what you think about GPT-4. Thank you.